actually go over the syllabus. So y'all that had, had this is y'all's first semester. Uh, what we do is the uh, syllabus is around eight pages just for our class. And you think the college has pretty close to about 3,500 students. They're taking five classes. Every one of them gives out a syllabus. That's a lot of trees, right? Mm -hmm. So what the college wants us to do is they want us to post the syllabus up on Blackboard, the actual physical syllabus. Well, we know you need to have the information when you buy your books and stuff like that. So what we do is we get out, we give out the brief that shows you the books, the times the classes meet, who to teach, uh, who your alternate contacts are. Uh, so this class is definitely Blackboard supported. And access Blackboard through the college's homepage. Uh, you can go to current or you can just type in blackboard.lawsonstate.edu and this will take you directly to the Blackboard login screen. Okay guys, what's those usernames for y'all that's been here? Uh, it's first letter, last name, then four digits of your student number. But it's it's printed on the top of your schedule. It's your email address minus the at Lawson State minus the students at Lawson State .edu. So on the top of your schedule would be your Blackboard login. <coughs> By the way, if, you, if you've never been on Blackboard before, uh, you can go to Lawson State's website because I'll, I'll step you through it here. But on Lawson State's website, I should open it another. Uh, uh, you can go to current student. And then down here, this is a link to Blackboard. And of course, our college, we have links to links to links. So what this is, this tells you uh, exactly what you need to do. It tells you how to get your name. It tells you how to get, what password you originally come up with. Okay. So how did y'all get there? We went to new students, right? I mean, I'm sorry, current students, and just clicked on the what on the Blackboard link here, and then it comes up and will explain how to uh, log into Blackboard. But uh, Oops. So your password, what's y'all's original password? I think it's your birthday, right? Your your month, two-digit month, two-digit day, two-digit year of your birthday. And that's your default password. Of course, what you need to do is when you log in, the first time is you need to change your password. Oops. And you'll have a Blackboard class. You'll have a Blackboard. Oops. Yes, there is. There should be a public. Lawson State's public. It's open. I think they got two publics yeah, out there. Yeah. So accessing the syllabus, is it smart phone or friendly? Or it it's a phone? it's a PDF. And most most things now allow you to do PDF on. What Jay? Yeah, Blackboard has a free app out there too. You can get it off. It supports both the iPhones and the Android phones. Uh, of course if you're using Blackboard on your uh, Phone that's rough. <laughs> so, right here under personal information on the left hand side, this is where you could go and change your password. So, this is where you probably need to do the first time you log in. If you ever logged in before, make sure you change your password. Don't use your birthday. Set it to a password that you normally use, right? So when it uh, loads up, 
eventually. It's going to have a list of the courses that uh, you have enrolled in for every semester. And the problem is, over time, it gets long, really long. So what you can do, and you're not deleting the class, guys. You're just telling it not to display certain classes. You come up here with up in the upper left-hand corner. You just hit this little wheel, and all you do is come over here and just uncheck the classes that you don't want to be displayed. And you can always get them back up. Uh, what I like to do is just put the courses up that I'm teaching during the semester, and that way it makes it a lot. Unfortunately, when you take them off here, uh, you still have them over here on courses, so you'd have to do them in, in two places. So that would be the same place. Okay? Everybody okay so far? Okay, so here's our course, ILT 194, which is Introduction to Programmable Logic Controllers. So this is the Blackboard site. So anywhere you're at, uh, home page. By the way, you can hide the main menu. If you come down here, there's a little scroll button, a little button right there. You push it, and so it, and it just makes your display a lot bigger. Uh, but I get somebody all the time saying, that menu's not on my Blackboard site. So you know what they've done, right? They've accidentally, like on a touch screen or something, they've accidentally hit it. Uh, so you can see, uh, you can see to get it back, you just come up here and just hit it again. Okay. So that's home page. These were all the course announcements will be in. Uh, what I'll do, well, anytime I send an announcement, I'll also uh, send an email out to your college email address to them that there's an announcement up on Blackboard. Uh, here's our course calendar, and it's almost there. Uh, there's some things I hadn't got ready yet. So we're right here, first class, uh, drop add-ins, and you've got an assignment due uh, on this Friday. Uh, you got a syllabus agreement that's due here. Assignment one, assignment two, and then we have several assignments. And then already uh, uh, this one, uh, for this class, this is Labor Day, so we'll be off that class on September 2nd, and then we're going to be taking our first test right there. That's only an eight week term, guys. You're going to have to have a test about every, we're doing three tests, right? About every four classes. Five for the first one because we got 15, 15, 15 classes to work with. Uh, okay, so far. Okay, so this is an important uh, place to go, right? Uh, so uh, handouts. These are a bunch of handouts that we'll be using in class. In fact, handouts shouldn't even be here. I need to move that. Oh, I am. I'm in course content. So. Uh, Sorry, got ahead. But first week, uh, quizzes and course information. This is a very important link, especially during the first uh, week of the class. Uh, this is where your syllabus will be at. This is where the safety and evacuation procedures for this campus will be at. This is where the dress code uh, policy will be at. And I also think that children on campus is. Uh, so this is where the actual official course syllabus is at. So here's the brief. That's just another copy of what I've given out to you. Uh, so here's the actual course syllabus. And we'll come back to this once we uh, go back over to the rest of the Blackboard site. So we're going to come back and actually go over the syllabus here in a little while. Oops. By the way, this is a back, back, so you don't have to go through all the buttons again. Uh, so. Safety evacuation procedures, uh, the Lawson State dress code, and then instructions information. This is where I put my office hours, but uh, I'll also post them too. My office hours are kind of weird because all the other responsibilities I have. This is your first week quizzes right here. So uh, before next class, you need to read the official course syllabus, and you need to come up here and do what? Just agree. It's a syllabus agreement, and it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like a yeah, it is, and it's kind of like these software things pops up all the time when these uh, in, these in, in user license agreements. Every time you install an application, it'll pop up and. Uh, so that is, so this is the syllabus agreement, oops. 
So it just says you understand that the syllabus is a contract between me and you. Uh, and of course, if you disagree with the syllabus, you don't have to uh, set up an appointment with me to explain why you disagree with the syllabus. So you can't sit in the class if you disagree with the course, the syllabus for the course, right? Does that make sense? Also, you'll have a quiz on here on the safety and evacuation quiz for this campus. And also, you'll come in and it, uh, state that you'll adhere, adhere to the college dress code policy. Uh, so currently, these are the assignments for the class. It has due dates. Due dates will be posted on the calendar, by the way. So the first assignment says you're supposed to read the course syllabus, the evacuation, safe procedures, dress code, and, uh, and the course information section over there. And then you're supposed to do all your quizzes, right? When you did my assignment too, you said error. On, you know, um, we're not trying to submit it. Well, the email instructor only to email. Really? You said trying to send it. And you said error. When I did assignment too, I don't know if it went through or not. But we'll see. I I, no, no, because I, I, my email, it pops up. It even pops up on my phone. <laughs> okay. So we'll see Where what's going on. I just did the um, course name in my uh, degree. So these are the assignments that we'll have during the semester. And the last assignment is to complete the course evaluation. Are we okay so far? Okay, then we get into the meat of the course. This is the course content. Uh, so YouTube videos, these are these are these are uh, videos that I haven't recorded. These are ones that's been downloaded off the internet. It's got a YouTube link. Uh, here's all the lecture slides for the class. So this is pretty much well the, the order. It gives you uh, the, they're available as full, uh, but also they're available as three in in the threes. Uh, so a lot of people like to just print this thing off and then. Uh, What's nice about this is it gives you the ability to do uh, notes on this. Yes, this is Bible work. I'm actually going over the Bible side. So everything you I'm doing up here, you have access to. Yeah, so this is all the, these are all the chapters. So every chapter, so all the PowerPoints that I'll be using in class, those will be the same PowerPoints. And we, like I do, we do have some students uh, that actually makes notes for the PowerPoint. But that's up to you. I mean, it's your call. What else was over there? Uh, this is all the reference material uh, for the uh, for the class. So here's the actual manuals for the PLCs that we're going to be dealing with. We're going to be dealing with Adderall for Adderall controllers, and um, and these are the actual manuals that go along with it. Uh, we'll be looking at different numbering systems, and we will be looking at the reduction laws. We won't be doing any reduction of the but they're up there anyway. And then electrical control symbols, we will be using these. Let me find where I'm at. Uh, recorded lectures. So what we do is you probably see this little thing down here in the bottom right here. Uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm recording exactly what I'm doing in class. Uh, so uh, guys, if you can, if you can, uh, you know, it's only got, we only got 15 classes in this class. Every class basically counts as two classes because it's many to come. Uh, but I understand that certain things happen 
and you might have to be absent. Well, these lectures and everything are going to be recorded, and they're put up on YouTube. Uh, you can use the link to get up there, or you can just go up in the YouTube and search for Rich Raymond. It'll pop up. It'll have my picture. I'm usually the very top one. You'll be able to see all my 600 lectures up there for all the classes that I've done for a long time. So. So that's all you just click on that it'll take you right up to my channel there and you can subscribe to me or not it's up to you uh, this is where your test reviews will be so normally we don't do test reviews in class what we do is we'll set a test review up um, the class before the test is available you go over that test review uh, if you have any questions on that you need to submit those to me to the email uh, that way I can go out and either send it out to the whole class or I can come back and just send, uh, send it out to you. Okay? Uh, previous tests, what we do in this class is that we give a test. Uh, in the next class, we go over the test. Uh, and what I do is I put that test up on Blackboard. Uh, you can go out there. It won't help your grade. It won't hurt your grade. You can go out and you take that as many times as you want to because what? I learned a long time ago is we learn by repetition. So what that means is, is I take questions, especially questions y'all had problems with from test one and move them on to what? Test two. So there'll be a lot of questions on test two. What, James? Are going to be worth points this time? They're going to be worth points, right. That's what the PT, assignment PT1. What I found out is that, and, and once you learn something one way in your, in your brain, is you'll have a tendency to make the same mistake over and over again. So what we were noticing is the I've been putting the previous tests up there all the time, but there was very few students that was taking advantage of that. And I would literally go in there and I would look at who missed what questions, and you'd find the same student missed the same question on all three on all three tests, even though we go over the test. So what I do now is I require you to go out and do those previous tests. So before you take test two, you're going to have to do the previous test for what test one. Before you do test three, well, you don't have to. It's just you won't get points. This is counted as part of your assignment. Uh, so if you don't, then before you do test three, you'll take the previous test for test two. And then before you take the final exam, you'll have to take the previous test, test three. Now, what is the final exam? Well, the final exam is just questions off those three tests. So what you're doing is you're studying for the final exam. And you're doing it during the term, right? You understand that? So the final exam, that's what it is. There's no new material on the final exam. We'll be in lab toward the end. We'll start off with a lot of lectures, and toward the end we'll be predominantly in lab. Okay. And so that's your study for the final exam. But yeah, there are points, but it counts toward your assignment. And whatever you make on the previous test, that's what you get on that assignment, percentage-wise. And how many times can you take the previous test? As many times as you want. So it always bothers me when you see somebody makes a 70 on that previous test, and that's what they get on the assignment, when they could have done what? You take it again, and, and the, way this, the way the software is set up, uh, it's set up to give you the high score. Now, when I give you credit for the assignment, it, it is on that day. So when you, come in on, when you come in and take test two, whatever the high score is at that time, that's, the, that's what you get for that assignment. Now you can go back after the end and make it a hundred. It's not going. It's not going to help you on that assignment. So I don't go back and change this, that to learn it right. But I never understand why somebody can't end up with a hundred on it anyway, or up in the upper nineties, right? And then, and then when those questions are on the second test, you know that's one of those. Uh, you should already know. I'm not going to say you don't already know. You should. Huh? Okay, uh, and then this is this is where the, this is the link we'll actually use the test. Test is going to be given down in 200 where the class was originally set up at, and uh, the tests are going to be basically the first test I think is totally on computer. After that, we'll be splitting up between computers. I'll, I'll have to wait and see. So most of our tests in here is going to be in two parts. Uh, we'll do a written part, and then you'll do a computer part. Any information that you send me about the class, 
anything referenced on this class, you need to use this email instructor if it works. Yeah. If you're using this email instructor link, and what that does is in my email, I have a, I have a folder set up for this class. And so what happens, it automatically sorts that email into that folder. And it's a lot easier for me to handle that way than trying to go through all the email that I get and sort and see who's it's from and where's it coming from. And you can also email anybody in your class once you learn their names. So we use that link right there. And of course, evaluation. Of course, this is where you'll go uh, at uh, to do the last assignment. Uh, this is where you'll evaluate me and what type of job I did. And all these down here are actually uh, LSCC links. I'm going to go ahead and take this. Leave that up there. Uh, e withdrawal. We'll talk about that when we look at the syllabus. So that's pretty much well my portion of the website. All the rest of it is just stuff that Lawson State wants to wanted to add. It's fun setting up these blackboard sites, guys. So let's go back here. First week course and information, and you've got a copy of the brief. Y'all got any questions on the brief? Pretty straightforward. It also tells you how to check your college email. It also, on that thing, should explain to you how you come in and actually set up your Blackboard thing. I mean, I'm sorry, log into Blackboard. I got a question on the email. Uh, my email doesn't work, and I tried to email tech support. So you. Yeah. It didn't work either. <laughs> I'm, I'm logged into my Blackboard. It's good. Change password on good. It's good. Sweet. Hey and Danny, but as far as my email, me and Allison try to get it. Me and the people down there. Down where? Down the hill. Me and Allison tried to access it that day, and then I went up here to uh, which one of these offices behind admissions. She told me to try to send technical support an email, and I did try. It didn't work. Well, when you send it to technical, you probably need to use that email address besides the one that's not working. No, their link on the website. Oh, really? <laughs> so I don't, I don't know who to ask about that. I don't either. I don't either. I mean, that's a first semester. It's been a long time. So that's a, that's a really good question. I wish I could answer it for you. So like I said, we're just going to go over the high points of the syllabus. We're not going to read the whole thing because you're required to read the course syllabus. Uh, anybody got a copy of the book? So you show them around. This is the, this is the actual textbook. Anybody got a copy of the lab book? Oh, we already got it. Deal with these books by Wednesday? We should be okay this week. Okay. Yeah. But after that, we probably really need them. Yeah, yeah next Monday should be fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, you need a scientific calculator in this class. You need a flash drive in this class. Uh, Post-its haven't worked out really well. The, the new PLCs, or the old PLCs that worked out really well, the new ones that we're trying to go to. Uh, oh, I should have hooked up my camera, but the, the switches are actually too close on this thing to actually put, put a pit post-it notes on there. All uh, and pencils. We use pencils in this class. I got, especially on your lab forms and everything like that, uh, that you're going to be filling out in your labs. I got tired of falling road maps a long time ago. So people will make a mistake and they got a pen, and what do they do? Scratch it out, and then they make a mistake again, and they scratch it out, and then I'll be following errors and stuff around the pages. Uh, so I found out a long time ago that uh, the forms in here we'll do in we'll do in pencil. Blackboard, everybody understand, everybody in this class has got to use Blackboard, and you can see why, right? It's very important to this class. Uh, 
Here's our student learner outcome. So this is basically what we're going to be shooting for uh, this semester. I mean, your textbook, uh, we're going to go off where, uh, if, you, if you got your textbook, in this class, we're going to go all the way down through time, timers and counters. Uh, then if you're taking the ILT 196 course, which is the advanced PLC class, we'll take up exactly where this course leaves off. So this will get, uh, these guys are computers. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to, what we're going to do now is figure out right now, of course, the basics of how to program these things and the basic, you know, the syntax, how things lays out, all the terminology. There's a lot of terminology we, you, that you have to learn for PLCs because they're computers. So not only do you have to know a bunch of electrical stuff, you also got to know a lot of terminology about computers. What's that? What's the POC is going to be in a machine type of way. Right? Oh, you mean, yeah, the PLC uh, used to, we, we have what we call logic. What's logic? Does so anybody know what logic is? What logic is, is, is very easy. We got what we call and logic, it means this and this and this and this has to be true. Uh, we have what we call or logic, which means this or this or this or this can be true. Uh, then we have what we call not, and then we have nans and ors, and then we have exclusive ors and exclusive ands. Originally, uh, uh, exclusive ors, exclusive ors and exclusive nors, excuse me. Uh, so uh, originally all this logic was done with what we call relays. We'll look and see what a relay is. Uh, this is relay logic. We call that relay logic. Uh, what they found out was that 90% of what a relay logic uh, circuit does, 90% is nothing but decision making, trying to figure out what should occur before in what sequence. Uh, they found out that that 90% could be very easily done by a computer. So what happened when they went to PLCs, that dropped the circuit down by 90% of the components that was required to make that. So used to, you'd look at a big relay cabinet. And it, I mean, we had cabinets out at U.S. Steel. Uh, they were about as long as this room right here, and one whole wall was nothing but relays because it was all relay logic. Done a real good job. Uh, then they came in and replaced it with a PLC. Now, we're not going to do away with these things called relays, and we'll look at that because those are your power guys. Those are the guys that handle the power. The PLCs make the decisions. And then we program these things. So that's what a PLC, a PLC is a computer that's specifically designed to run machines. And computers are programmable. But when you start talking about these things with people who understand these things, then they're gonna use a lot of computer jargon inside there too. You know, like RAM and ROM and memory and uh, compile and decompile and assembling and structure and so, there's a lot of stuff of memory. Y'all have a little feeling of memory is just by buying your iPhone. You know, the more memory you have in your iPhone, the more, uh, more apps you can put in there, right? right. And so uh, PLCs don't have that memory because they don't need it because they don't have all this graphical garbage in there. I think this, I think this guy right here has like 16K in it. I think. So this is the PLC. And they come in different shapes and sizes. This is a slow computer. And then we connect to it on the outside world. We'll look and see how we do that. Uh, and then, of course, basically it deals with it like any computer. And it, basically computers can, can consist of three main parts. Anybody know what that are? Those are. Just think about your cell phone. You have inputs. You have processing in between the inputs. And you have outputs. That's what computers do. Here, though, we're going to hook up all type of sensors to the inputs to make from, from out there sensing the world. And then come here, we're going to turn on relays and stuff like that with the outputs. And in between that is going to be a program. So that's what we're doing here. We're, we're playing around with programming. Uh, so we're going, to, we're going to see what's required to take the place of these guys, these big relays and stuff on the wall, which gives us down to timers and counters. But these guys are computers. They'll do math. But relays can't do math. They can make decisions. They can do all kind of stuff. Well, that's where advanced PLCs come into play, it's where we get into the compare instructions, the math instructions, the, the actual true logic instructions, uh, the sequencer instructions, 
uh, all kind of neat stuff. That's what we get into in, in the PLCs. Uh, so PLC2 is we're going to do stuff that we can't do with what? Relays. That computers can do, but can't, but relays can. not So it's a, so this is the, uh, this is the, uh, the scaling for the class. So you know, tests is 26% so of your grade, your assignments, which the tests and stuff are part of that is 10%. Uh, just your four way quiz, quizzes is 4% of your grade. Just having your required supplies for the class is 10%. Uh, your laboratory is very, very heavy weight in this class, 32% in the final exam is 26%. Okay. So uh, this is why people come in, that total that pops up on there, I try to turn that thing off. That has nothing to do with your grade. That only comes into play if everything has the same weight. So I had a guy that came in and says, I I'm supposed to make a B in that class and you gave me a C. And what he did is he took all these different things right here, the tests and the assignments, and he gave them all the same weight. He added the percentage that he made on all those things and divided it by five, and he, and he came up with a score. But what he was doing is he was giving assignments the same weight as tests, right? You understand that? So uh, it'll be calculated as we go along on Blackboard. Uh, this class, you have to have at least a C to pass the class. This is one of your major courses. If you're one of your major courses, you have an eight, you have to make at least a one. C. C to pass class. If you make a D, you have, you're going to have to repeat it. And here's the breakdown. Tests. What we do is we give three tests. Tests are already scheduled up on Blackboard. Uh, this is an eight-week term, guys. We cannot move the test around. So because we got to have one, five class, and after that, every four classes, we're going to have to have a test. Got to. Uh, we don't give make us because what we do in this class is we give a test, the next class we go over the test. <coughs> if you haven't taken the test, then I can't do what? I can't go over the test, right? You understand that? So what we do to compensate for that, because we realize that life happens, is that we let, we're going to drop your lowest test score. So that means if there's one test, if you miss two tests, you, you can't pass, the, you couldn't pass the class anyway, right? You understand that? Well, that's not true. We had a guy, I had a guy that did really, really good in lab. <laughs> Missed two tests and did pass the test. He ended up with a C, but he was an A student. So what we do is we give three tests. Like I said, these are already up on the calendar, so you can go out here and make sure that you plan that. We can't move those around much uh, because of the way things are set up. If I move it one class, then we're going to have to change the whole test and everything around and add more material to one test, take it away from the other. And it's just, you just can't do that. Uh, assignments, everybody seen the assignments, right? Yes. Everybody understand the first week quizzes and those agreements, right? Everybody okay? And of course, the last assignment is the course survey. You're given points for that. Uh, then the final exam, no one's exempt from the final exam. Like I said, we just use the final exam as a review uh, to move you forward. Advance, if you're going to take the advanced PLC class. And it's a really good test. The instructor is fantastic. This is about recording lectures, guys. This is a technology. Y'all understand that and sometimes these applications crash on us, right? Uh, so I'll, I'll make my best just to get them all up there, but every once in a while that happens. Um, so withdrawals this is another problem that i have almost every semester especially in extremely big classes luckily we got a manageable class i think we got 11 people in the class which is a really good si signed up uh i cannot we, we call it the right to fail i cannot withdraw you from the class so if you decide you want to stop coming guess what i'm gonna do i'm gonna grade you like you were here so if you don't turn in a lab you get a wad on it a zero. You don't take a test, you get a what? Zero. Uh, you don't do assignments, you get a zero, and then you end up getting an F in the class. So what you need to do if something happens, and we can do this online. When I first started here, uh, they had a, a sheet of paper that you that a student to drop the class had to go around and get all the instructors to sign to sign this. We don't do that. We don't have to do that anymore. In fact, now you can actually apply for graduation without me having anything to do with it. So we get calls every once in a while from the, uh, 
but the, the uh, actually the registrar's office is handling all that now. So if it, if something happens and you need to with, uh, drop out of the class, then you have to do an e-withdrawal. And like I said, it's on the Lost State website, but there's also one on Blackboard. It's called e-withdrawal. You pop into that thing, you go in, and you fill in the information. And then you're withdrawal from the class. They'll send me a little text saying so and so has dropped the class. And then uh, what you'll do is you'll get a D. Uh, well, no, you'll get a you'll get a D, not a D in the class. You'll get a withdrawal or dropped. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't want to scare y'all. And that doesn't count against your grade point average. If you go, but they have the last day to withdraw, and I'll need to put that on the college calendar too. Uh, the last day to withdraw, if you if you drop out after the last day to withdraw, then you get a grade, a, a true grade. If you drop out before the last day to withdraw, then you're going to get a drop. We call it a W in the class. And what that means is a W does not count against your grade point average. And once you've got, a G, once you've got an F on a grade point average, it's hard to get off. People don't understand that. Uh, you make an F in it one time, you retake it and uh, make an A in it, and then you basically get a, a, great, a GPA for a C because those classes are always in, included in your GPA, right? You understand that? Are we okay? Lateness, I start this class on time. I was in the military, and I learned that if you show up on time, you're late, so, especially the trade I was in. Even out of U.S. Steel. Uh, so academic integrity, plagiar plagiarism. You know what plagiarism is? What is that? Copy yeah. Well, using somebody claiming claiming other people's work is your own. Keep doing. This is a, a, a professional decorum. So texting in class, we don't want that. Stick it on your cell phone, guys. Uh, I understand sometimes you get. You get calls. Uh, now the name pops up there, which don't necessarily you mean you mean you've got to answer it with the call. Uh, if you have to talk, I, just get your cell phone up and do what? Go out and hall, carry on your conversation. Don't really like Rich at the start of class, right? <laughs> uh, eating and drinking in class. This is college. I don't mind you drink, uh, bringing drinks in here as long as you throw your stuff away. But we don't eat in class, okay? And ignore it. And People chopping on potato chips and crimping their bags it annoys me. Uh, wearing inappropriate clothing. Course concerns. If you have a concern, uh, concern about the class, number one, you need to talk to me. If, I, if you can't resolve it with me, then you'll need to talk to me. <laughs> you'll probably need to go talk to me. I am the department chair, by the way. Uh, probably you'll probably go and talk to Miss Wilson. You know, she's. You need to talk to me. Second, you need to talk to me. And then third, you need to, uh, there's a link on the blackboard about cons uh, class concerns. That would be the last thing you would go and do. And then they set up a committee and they bring us in and talk to us. Other people. So probably uh, in this class, you'll probably need to set up an appointment with Ms. Wilson. I don't know, Ms. Wilson. <laughs> you know, you're the personality for the first and second one right there. What's that? Personality. Well, anybody know Ms. Wilson? Okay. She's a great girl. She, yeah, yeah. yeah, she's the yeah, assistant dude. She's the right. assistant. She's basically over career tech on this campus here. We don't harass against people, guys. Uh, disability. I've had problems with this before. Uh, I cannot legally make special uh, considerations for, a, or not special, considerations for some people that's got disabilities without it being documented. So, like, you can't come up to me and say, Rich, I need to have more time on test. What you have to do is you have to go through the, a the ADA office. They'll send me a letter saying so-and-so needs more time to take a test. And what we'll do is we'll figure out how to do that. Normally, what we do is we let you take, we let you come in early and take the test in another classroom. That's what we normally do. All right. Well, not in this class because we'll be taking tests toward the end. So, we might be able to arrange that. But I can't, I can't make, a, I can't make, Considerations for one student without doing what? Yeah, okay. Without making it all of it, unless it's a documented. So we do want you to excel in class, and we have made uh, arrangements to uh, out allow people to sell, uh, sell in the class. Cell phone and pagers, all we ask you is just put it in one. Silent mode. 
Acceptable use policy, this basically says this stuff, uh, all the computers down in 200 don't belong to you. They belong to the college, right? So you don't need to get in there and install applications or change things. Another thing, guys, when you get through, uh, what we do uh, for our whole division is that we use a generic login uh, to log in. So what this means is if you don't, if when you, you don't log out of the computer, so you've got your grade book on Blackboard, and you log out of the computer, and the next person comes in and logs in with the same username and same password, it pops up, and guess what they see? They see your grade book. All you need to do at the end, when you use our computers before you leave is just do what? Don't shut them down, just log out. And that way it closes everything that you got. Uh, no children on campus. Unfortunately, we don't have daycare here. They tried to talk about it one time, but they just couldn't afford it. Uh, then notes. By the way, uh, once I learn your name, uh, I will do role in, in when the class starts. And then you're talking about an absent-minded professor, that's me. Uh, after I do row, I have to, once I learn your name, I'll do it without him calling. We'll call we'll call row over the first few times. Usually after about the first test, I'll have your names down. Some of you I know. Uh, after that, I'll do row. You won't even know I do it, right? Uh, if you come in late, all I want you to do is just say, Rich, I'm here. Because I, if you're not here when I do row, I'll put an absent in and I'm through with row. And then I'm teaching, right? Also, if you leave early, you need to let me know if you leave early, just for safety reasons. So if we had a fire or something and we left, and I thought you, and we got out there, and I thought you were still here, then they're going to send somebody in here looking for you. Or if I don't know you're here, then we're not going to send anybody looking for you. So if you leave early, you need to let me know. Just say, I'm, and there's no, don't say, Rich, is it okay if I go? Because what's Rich going to say? No. no. But if you say, Rich, I've got to go, you're an adult, I can't keep you here. Um, but, but I will say no. Uh, and of course, the syllabus quiz and all this kind of stuff. And uh, profanity, guys. We don't use profanity in my classrooms, please. So that's basically a brief run over of the course syllabi or syllabus. You got any questions on that? Of course, y'all supposed to go back and do what? Well, read the actual syllabus yourself and then take the quiz. Everybody okay? Okay, guys, y'all take a 10-minute break and then come back and we'll look at the first thing.